So please, uh, Dr. Newman, until uh, you will prepare your magic over there, uh, we will say a few, just a few words about you for whoever does not know who is Jack Newman. <laughs> Now, good morning. As a representative of uh, the Cretan Medical Association, uh, all pediatricians of uh, the island of Crete, we, I dare to say that we give our life and soul supporting this initiative about breastfeeding because we fully believe that beyond any doubt, it is uh, of paramount importance in order for a family to uh, be uh, uh, healthy and of course for a newborn to be equally healthy. Now, as far as our first speaker is concerned, I need to say that uh, yesterday I started reading his uh, bio and I was truly impressed. Dr. Jack Newman is a man who has truly dedicated his life uh, in breastfeeding. He's an expert of breastfeeding. He started his life by studying medicine in Toronto, in Canada. He's a pediatrician. He's the first pediatrician and founder of IBC, of the International Breastfeeding Center. He, though he started as a pediatrician for 10 years, he worked at an emergency department. Finally, he focused and he, he started working on breastfeeding. He was the first founder of the first hospital uh, of supporting breastfeeding in Canada. And since then, for more than 34, 35 years, with uh, various articles, uh, presentations, three books that he has published with concrete guidelines of supporting breastfeeding, he is uh, uh, doing a great work, a battle, I dare to say. His, uh, his motto is difficulties. Uh, should not be an excuse to stop breastfeeding, but it is a challenge for women and for mothers to be able to continue breastfeeding. So it is a great honor, Dr. Jack Newman, to have us among, among us today. And we look, we look forward to hearing your speech. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I'm afraid I've already used up all my Greek. Uh, no, 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 I, I forgot already. Thank you very much. It's a very, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and to be able to discuss with you a uh, topic which I find uh, uh, extremely uh, important and extremely passionate for me. And so, uh, without uh, uh, you know speaking uh, more, uh, the time is short, and I would like to show you some uh, videos. I think that these videos will be very useful if you really understand what's going on in them and it's not that complicated. I think that we all want mothers to be able to breastfeed but I think that we need to know more about the practical aspects of breastfeeding. Um, the, uh, uh, I will try to speak slowly for the uh, interpreters uh, but uh, you know uh, if, uh, if uh, I'm speaking too quickly again just give me the okay and I'll slow down. All right. Uh, Okay, so let us start because the time is short. Uh, the first two uh, things I'm going to show you actually are not uh, videos, but two photos. Two photos of the same baby who uh, uh, was weighed on two different scales. And I think that one of our big problems with breastfeeding is that for too many health professionals, the real issue is, or the only issue, is the baby's weight. The baby's weight does not mean so much. We have to understand that scales can be wrong, that scales can mislead. And so here is a baby weight on a scale which was completely checked and is working fine. And I think you can see that in this photo the baby weighs 3.51 kilos. 3.51 kilos, perfectly appropriate for a baby of three weeks who was born uh, smaller. And he's gaining fine, and everything is working great. We took the same baby, and we put him on another scale. And, as you can see, in one minute, 
the baby lost 400 grams. Okay, so let us be careful about the scales because scales can be wrong. In addition to scales being wrong, we have this rule in many hospitals in North America, and I would bet that it's true also for Europe, that if a baby loses 10% of his birth weight, then the baby needs to be supplemented. And this is wrong as well. And the reason it's wrong is that most mothers uh, receive a lot of intravenous fluids during the labor and birth. And if the mother receives three or four liters in 24 hours, which often happens, then, of course, the baby also gets some of that water. And so as soon as the baby is out, the baby will be urinating and the baby will start to lose weight, but not real weight, weight that's water. And so 10% weight loss is actually quite meaningless. On top of everything, when a mother has received so much IV fluids during the labor and birth, Parts of her body, actually all her body, will be swollen with fluid, including her feet, her fingers, and her nipples and areolas. And because of the swelling of the nipples and the areolas, the babies will have difficulty latching on. And so we have this problem of the baby not latching on well. If a baby doesn't latch on well, the baby will then not get milk because in order for a baby to get milk, he has to latch on well. And especially when there's not a lot of milk. In the first few days, there's not a lot of milk. There's enough, but the baby has to get it. So, there are real issues when we talk about weight. And so how do we know if a baby is getting lots of milk? Well, we always talked about urine output. Well, if the baby is overloaded with fluid, what does uh, urine output mean? Well, nothing. Okay, all right, so let's go on and see how do we know a baby is getting enough milk from the breast. What you're going to see in this first video that I'm going to show is a baby who was one month old. The mother came to our clinic because the mother had sore nipples, but not because the, there was a problem with the baby's weight. She was exclusively breastfeeding, and let me show you how to know a baby is getting milk from the breast. What you're going to see in this uh, video is the baby on the breast with what I call an asymmetric latch, a very important uh, way of getting the baby onto the breast. And the baby, if, this, if the baby's uh, chin is my thumb and the upper lip is my uh, rest of my fingers, then a baby is getting milk by doing or showing it by going pause, pause, pause. And the longer the pause, the more milk the baby got. Isn't that simple? The problem is, how come nobody knows about it? Except you, probably, already. All right, so let us see this. Watch for the pause, watch for the asymmetric latch, and let's see how to know this baby is getting milk. Okay, so pause. There's a long pause. Okay, the longer the pause, the more milk the baby got. So you'll notice the baby's chin is in the breast, but not the nose, and the baby is uh, covering more of the... Now there he's not... That's not a pause, he's thinking. <laughs> and why did the baby start sucking again? Because the milk started to flow again. If the baby does not get milk flow from the breast, the baby tends to stop sucking, and if it lasts for a long time, the baby will start to fall asleep at the breast. Babies are often said to be tired because they fall asleep at the breast, or because the baby is... Uh, 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 the vodka? Yes. Uh, raki, raki, raki. Oh, raki. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so you can see how well the baby is drinking here. If a baby drinks like this for 20 minutes, and why would we tell the mother to breastfeed for 20 minutes? But if he did breastfeed for 20 minutes, then he would be full. He wouldn't need to take the other side. He's going to be great, but he should be offered the other side. Because this idea that has grown up 
over the years that you must feed the baby on only one breast at a feeding so that the baby gets the hind milk or the high fat milk. This is something I feel responsible for and I was wrong. And I never suggested that this is the way, but somehow it's gotten out there. So, can you see? Did you, who did not see that pause in the chin? You don't have to be worried. If you didn't see it, watch this video. It's on our website, and you saw our website passing by earlier. So lots of drinking here. This baby is getting lots of milk. Okay. On the other hand, what's this? Okay, I'll skip that for a second. This baby is 12 days old, this baby is hardly drinking milk at all from the breast. What you're going to see is a baby who's on the breast but nibbling. Now we corrected the baby's latch so that the baby has this asymmetric latch. But the baby is hardly drinking at all. She's going nibble, 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 nibble. Okay? Okay. So an asymmetric latch, that's good. But is she drinking? Do you see any pauses at all? This baby is hardly getting milk, not even a little bit. And how can this be? This baby is supposed to be exclusively breastfeeding. The baby may be exclusively on the breast, but the baby is hardly getting any milk at all. In fact, what I think happened here, because I cannot imagine how a baby could be drinking like this at the breast, and still be alive 12 days after birth because she's getting nothing. And what I think has happened here, because this is the first time that we saw this baby, this baby had an extremely tight tongue tie. And I think that likely the mother's milk supply was okay to begin with, or at least reasonable, but then the milk supply decreased because if the baby does not have a good latch, then the baby doesn't get milk well. If the baby doesn't get milk well, the mother's milk supply will decrease. So I think you can see the difference, right? I mean, it's very obvious. These are two extreme cases. That one where the baby is drinking very well, and the other where the baby is drinking almost nothing. <clears throat> okay, let us look at another video here. and. I'm not too sure what this baby is. Let me see. Uh, okay, I think we can leave that. I'll just go on for there. Uh, here is another baby who was not latching on. This baby was refusing the breast right from birth and was brought to our clinic because of that reason. Now, the baby was, uh, the mother was producing lots of milk. She had lots of milk, but the baby still refused to latch on. Well, we helped the mother latch the baby on, and the baby latched on like that. The reason that it was easy is that the mother was able to maintain her milk supply. She was expressing her milk and feeding it to the baby in a bottle. We would have recommended with a little cup, but that's what she did. What she didn't do, which has become an epidemic in our area, is that she didn't use a nipple shield because a nipple shield only gives the impression that the baby is latched on. And what results when the mother uses a nipple shield is the milk supply just plummets. So I think that nipple shields should be banned. They should be thrown away. They should be uh, illegal. <laughs> now this baby latched on, and you tell me, is this baby breastfeeding well? In fact, the pauses are even longer than in that first video that I showed you. So, a baby who drinks like this is doing just fine. Thank you very much. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay, so those are typical. You've seen that. It's great. It's wonderful. What about this baby? How's this baby's latch? I know I'm emphasizing the latch. The latch is very important. I mean, ultimately, if the baby's not latching on, the baby can't get milk from the breast. So, the better the latch, the better the baby gets milk. The worse the latch, the less the baby gets. So here, the mother <clears throat> apparently has a lot of milk. The baby has a terrible latch. You see how 
His cheeks suck in. He's, he is drinking, but he drinks only when the mother has a milk ejection reflex. Then, when the milk slows down, he falls asleep. And so the mother is doing all this useless uh, things to help him to wake up and get milk. But he won't start to suck again until the milk starts to flow. And this is an important issue as well. Many lactation consultants talk about babies transferring milk. That babies essentially suck milk out of the breast. Babies don't do that. Mothers transfer milk. I mean, how more obvious can it be that it's not baby sucking milk out of the breast, but rather the mother who transfers the milk to the baby. And take the example of a mother whose baby is lying there sleeping and the baby wakes up and starts to show signs of being hungry and the mother has a milk ejection reflex and the whole front of her blouse is wet. So who transferred milk? Of course the mother transfers the milk. But this has a lot of implications. Because when we say that the babies are the ones who transfer the milk, it means that it makes sense that premature babies get tired at the breast. That babies with cardiac problems get tired at the breast. They burn up too much energy and so they have to be bottle fed. It means all sorts of things when you start to think about it that have no sense. Mothers are the ones that send the milk to the baby. Now, the baby does his part, of course. So the, so the baby is not a uh, passive vessel. But in the case where the baby wakes up and starts to show signs of hunger, he's done his part, which is to say to the mother, okay, I'm hungry, feed me. And when the baby goes to the breast, he sucks on the breast, and that stimulates the, uh, the milk to flow. Now, we have a lot of issues in our uh, country. We have an idea that, that bilirubin is bad for you. Bilirubin's not bad for you. Bilirubin is good for you. Bilirubin is an antioxidant. It's better than quinoa. It's better than kale. And we're trying to get all sorts of jaundiced babies to donate their bilirubin, which we will sell for a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, what is the problem with bilirubin? The problem is that it's not the bilirubin that's causing what we're worried about. It's the fact that the babies are usually not breastfeeding well, and that's why their bilirubin increases. Bilirubin protects the baby, and so the bilirubin increases. But what the problem is, most of the time, is that the baby, uh, the mother, the baby's not breastfeeding well, not getting milk well from the breast, and so they become dry, sometimes dehydrated, they uh, become a little acidotic, they're not getting much milk, and so, you know, we say, oh, the blood brain barrier disintegrated, and so the bilirubin went into the brain, and the baby got uh, uh, encephalopathy from bilirubin. Well, here is a three day old baby. Uh, exclusively breastfeeding, he's 10% below birth weight. <gasps> the mother is under pressure to give the baby formula. But why would the mother have to do that? Watch the baby at the breast. Is this baby drinking well or not? Nobody has an answer? Drinking very well indeed. And so why does he need to get formula? Of course he doesn't need to get formula. Okay, so he is a bit jaundiced, and maybe that's why he was in hospital a little bit longer. But he doesn't need to be supplemented. He needs only to breastfeed and breastfeed well. The latch could be a little bit better, but that's okay. The mother was under pressure to give formula. However, a very good lactation consultant told her, Go home, keep breastfeeding exclusively, and that's fine. It'll be fine. And it was fine. And there was no problem. So again, I think this is a practical demonstration of how 10% means nothing. Now, this baby is in between. What I mean by that is that we saw this baby at two weeks of age. He's exclusively breastfeeding, but the family doctor was very worried that he was losing weight. But of course we don't know he was losing weight. 
because we had only two weights, one in hospital and one at the family doctor's uh, uh, office. But what we did know by watching the baby at the breast, that things were not so good. So we did what we usually do. We showed the mother how to get the best latch possible. The better the latch, the more milk the baby will get from the uh, breast. And I will show you what we do, but it is not the way to learn. Uh, no, they can't, uh, they need to, they need the, uh, okay, well I'll show you some other time, and maybe later. So we show the best possible latch. We tend to use cross cradle, not because it's necessary, but because we think that for a mother who is having difficulty, that it's the easiest way to learn how to latch a baby on well. So we help the mother latch the baby on well. We showed her what? How to know the baby is getting milk. Because just f as for you, the mother needs to know how to know the baby is getting milk. And how to know when the baby is not getting milk. So that Billy Rubin, that I, sorry, that baby that I showed you who was just nibbling at the breast, what has timing got to do with that baby? That baby could be on the breast for 24 hours and she still won't get enough. Timing has nothing to do with it. Forget it. A baby who drinks like the two babies that were drinking really well might breastfeed for 15 or 20 minutes and that's it. They don't even want the other side, but they might want the other side. Don't limit to one side. Okay, so we taught the mother how to know the baby's getting milk. Then we suggested to the mother, when the baby is starting to fade at the breast, the baby's starting to fall asleep and not drinking very much, don't wait for the baby to get too sleepy. Get your hand around your breast, and as the baby sucks, then squeeze the breast, and the baby will start to get milk flow again, start to wake up again, start to drink. When the baby starts to fade again, release the pressure, wait for the baby to start sucking, and then compress. And keep going like that until the baby's getting sleepy, the compression's not working, take him off before he gets too sleepy, and try the other side and do the same thing. And that's all we did. We asked the mother to come back in two days because the baby you'll see is drinking, but not drinking that well. This is after all we've done. So we said, okay, look, uh, the baby is okay, the baby may not be getting as much as he wants, but you're not going to get into trouble. The baby will be fine for two days drinking just like this. And so here, watch this baby now. And this is what we call borderline drinking. Not enough to be certain that the baby will gain weight, but enough so that the baby will not get into trouble. Okay, so here he is. Actually, it's a girl, by the way. Okay, so even with the baby's hand in the way, you can see that the baby is doing nibbling, but sometimes is drinking too. The mother is using the compression. You'll notice the asymmetric latch. And the baby is drinking some of the time, but not all the time. And that's how she did both sides. Okay, not really that great if you compare it to the first baby I showed you or even that third baby I showed you. But it's better than nothing. So the baby is drinking okay. And so we asked the mother to come back in two days with the baby. And in fact, the baby did not gain weight. But what was more important was that the baby was drinking better at the breast. And so we said, okay, it's getting better. Don't worry, don't supplement, don't do anything, except what we taught. And then a week later, the baby had gained 280 grams and never looked back. No supplements, no, uh, uh, no galactagogues, nothing. Not even Domperidone, which I think should be in the water supply. All right. Okay, I'm going to skip this one here. Okay, so here is a baby. Wait, let me stop this for a second. Where do I stop this? There, okay. So this baby is uh, two or three days old. I can't remember exactly. But you can see, again, this asymmetric latch. Chin in the breast, not the nose, covering more of the areola with his lower lip than his upper lip. The baby tends to sleep at the breast. Why? Why does a two or three day old baby or any baby, say under the age of five, six, seven weeks, tend to sleep at the breast? Because they're tired? Don't tell me that. Because the milk flow has slowed. Babies respond to milk flow and if they don't get that milk flow, 
then they tend to uh, fall asleep at the breast. Okay, so the mother is using compression to help this baby get more milk. There, pause, 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 pause. This is pretty good for a two or three day old baby. Okay, so he stops sucking. The mother releases the pressure. She waits for him to start sucking, which he will do one of these days. <laughs> and then she compresses. Okay, and this baby did very well. Okay. What did I do there? All right. Uh, okay, so this baby is two days old for sure. Okay, and that's me doing the compression because I was showing the mother how to do it. So as you see, again, when the baby doesn't get flow, the baby tends to sleep. You know, if you know just this, from what all the videos I'm going to show you, you know everything you need to know about practical breastfeeding management. Is the baby drinking? You bet. Does the baby need to be supplemented? No, she doesn't. Or he. This is a he. Okay. And I'll show you one more of a four-day-old baby who is also getting compressions. Mother is, hey, good, hey, nice, ready. Do we need to supplement this baby? Don't tell me that. Okay. Now, what we've learned over the years is that the better the latch, the more milk the baby will get from the breast. But if the baby gets milk from the breast, he can improve his latch. And you'll see this in this uh, video from uh, a friend who uh, sent it from Italy. So here's the baby. You'll see at the very beginning, this baby almost doesn't latch on. The baby's sort of got just the nipple in his mouth and doesn't even seem to be holding on. Right? Just a, just a little bit of the breast in his mouth. And all he does is nibble, right? But then, I'm not too sure what happened here, but the milk started to flow, and what happened? The baby improved his latch, and now is drinking just fine. In fact, is drinking a lot. Okay. All right. Uh, so... Good latch, more milk. More milk, improved latch. Okay, where am I here? Uh, okay, so you don't have to... We want that asymmetric latch because we think it's better. But it's not a good idea necessarily to take the baby off the breast at each... You know, oh, we can do better, let's take him off and latch him on again. So we say to the mother, just push in the baby's bum with the forearm so he'll shift. And I'll just show you this because it's... Uh, uh, okay, so the baby is nibbling. We say push in the baby's bottom so he's asymmetric. And you'll have to take my word for it, but he is drinking better. There's more flow, better drinking. Okay, so this is just to show how important the latching on is. Because here, in this video, uh, the hand is mine, I'm squeezing the mother's nipple, and you'll see that no milk comes out. Then I move back maybe a centimeter, and I squeeze there, and what happens? And I'm squeezing hard enough so that it could hurt the mother. I didn't want to do that on purpose. Okay? So breastfeeding is not complicated. Sometimes it's complicated to make it work, but the whole basis of it is simple. Now, I want you to make a diagnosis on this baby. This baby is five and a half months old. This baby has gained no weight for five months. Okay. And I think that from what I heard about this baby, they in, admitted the baby to the hospital and they spent a, a million euros to work up why this baby is not gaining weight. But you know, I hope you know, why this baby is not gaining weight. Wow. 
Anybody got an idea? Come on. IGT? No. Why is the baby not gaining weight? Not, don't make a diagnosis of the mother's problem. The baby's not getting milk. It's not complicated. And uh, apparently they made a diagnosis of lactose intolerance. This baby does not have lactose intolerance because babies would be gaining weight if they were getting lots of milk in spite of being lactose intolerant. And again, a very wise, uh, very knowledgeable lactation consultant said, look, your baby's five and a half months old. Forget the formula. We're going to suggest that you start the baby on food. Uh, he's five and a half months old. Do we really have to wait till the day he turns six months? That the day he turns 182 and a half days old? Of course not. So start the baby on solids. I'll tell you my prejudice is that formula is simply a liquefied solid. So let's give the baby solids. And the mother was put on domperidone and in one week the baby gained 250 grams and more than he ever gained in his life, his whole life. So here's that same baby, oh, no, 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 stop that, okay. Okay, so here's that same baby at 14 months of age, still breastfeeding. You can see by her fingers that she's pretty chunky. And here she is with her baby sister, I think, at three years of age, still breastfeeding, and perfectly normal. Okay. I'm going to skip along here because I don't have that much time. Now, this baby here is 10 hours old. The baby was born, to, first time pregnancy for a... Uh, 30-ish year old mother uh, that lasted four hours, the whole labor, and the baby was born perfectly normal. The baby went to the breast immediately and apparently breastfed very well. I saw the mother and baby at four hours after birth and if the baby was breastfeeding at four hours the way the baby was breastfeeding at zero hours, this baby was not breastfeeding well. This baby was not getting milk. So all I did was what I already told you. Worked on the latch. You'll see the baby's got an asymmetric latch. We taught the mother how to know the baby's getting milk. And yes, we suggested breast compressions. And the baby is now 10 hours old. So in North America, I don't know maybe here, but if a baby were breastfeeding only at zero hours, at four hours, and at 10 hours, they would start to panic. The baby must feed every three hours. No, the baby does not have to feed every three hours. If the baby is hardly getting milk from the breast, what's the point of feeding every three hours? Let's make it so the baby feeds well. <clears throat> and if the baby feeds well, this is fine. Zero, four, ten hours. Is the baby breastfeeding fine? That's the question. Notice how cute this baby is. Okay, so there he stops because the flow of milk stopped. The mother is squeezing her breast, which we don't usually recommend at this point, but okay, there he goes. And watch, the, the, the pauses are subtle, but they're there. And this baby breastfed well, breastfed exclusively, gained weight well, and at five and a half months was started on solids because he was reaching into the mother's plate. And he gained well, he, stayed, he was breastfed for two years until his baby brother was born, and then uh, he gave up on it. And as I said, cute baby, my first grandson. Aww. Well, I, di I didn't do anything. <laughs> it was my son and his wife. <laughs> okay. Um, and. Uh, you know, he's, he's fine. It's, that's the way it works. I, you know that I wouldn't be at, at the mother's bedside at four hours after birth if I didn't have a special relationship with it. <laughs> Especially since four hours after birth was about 5 a.m. Okay, where am I here? Now, we have a problem. And one of these problems 
is due to the fact that mothers are being told you must feed the baby on just one breast at every feeding. I, as I said, I, I, I probably share some of the blame, but I never suggested that this was, should be the way it is. You know, we don't do rules in breastfeeding. Finish one side, offer the other. If the baby is full, okay, maybe he won't take it. But we get these mothers that are being told, you are got to feed the baby on just one breast at a feeding. That's what happened with this baby. And this baby is now four months old and apparently has not gained weight for a whole month. Okay, but he always was gaining weight beautifully. But something changed. And here's what changed. His behavior. Look at him at the breast. Is he a calm, happy baby at the breast? No. Why not? Because the mother's milk supply decreased. And it decreased because she was told you must feed the baby on just one breast at a feeding because you have oversupply. And if you watch carefully, you'll see that the baby's chin is showing almost no pauses. For one or two seconds, he does two or three uh, sucks when the mother compresses the breast. But you see, he's not happy. So what doesn't this baby have? In Toronto, where I live, there's a good chance that the doctor would say, oh, he's got reflux, here's medicine. And would it work? Of course not. He doesn't have reflux. He's upset because the flow of milk is slow. Does he have allergy to something in the milk? No, he doesn't. Okay, so here's another case. It's similar. The baby has a tongue tie. And the reason that the milk supply is decreased is because the baby has a tongue tie. If the baby has a, a tongue tie, then he doesn't latch on well. If he doesn't latch on well, then the milk supply decreases. And here he is at five months, and you can see that he's, even though this one is continuing to gain weight well, that's because the mother starts off with a large milk supply. And this late onset decreased milk supply that we talk about is typical of the mother who starts off with a very good milk supply. So here he is at five months of age, continuing to gain weight, but the behavior is not right. He's hardly drinking, right? You can see that. Mostly nibbles. He pulls at the breast. He cry. Well, he's not crying exactly, but he's not happy. Mother does some breast compression somewhere here, and he settles for like three seconds. There. There. A little pause. There. A little pause. And then he pulls off the breast, and I guess he's talking to the cameraman and saying, help me for goodness sake, son. <laughs> well, just stop with the camera. Okay. Uh, where am I here? There's a few other babies that are doing the same thing, and I just want to show you this so that we don't talk about reflux and allergy to something in the milk. Right? He's pulling, he's not happy, he's begging his mother for some milk. He just keeps going back and forth. He's trying to talk to her. He's developing his speech so that he can know, that, to tell the mother he's not happy. Typical. And here, yet another baby, oh, with the same thing. Hardly latched on, pulling away from the breast, not happy. He doesn't have reflux. He doesn't have allergy. He doesn't have colic. He has, he's responding to a decrease in milk supply. And I want to emphasize that the mothers almost never believe me when I tell them that the babies had a de uh, the mothers had a decrease in their milk supply because she says, "Well, I can spray milk across the room and I can still pump, uh, you know, 70, 80 cc's from each breast every feeding." And I say, "Yes, but you had more before, and the baby responds to a slowdown in the milk flow." So, one of the causes I mentioned already is one breast per feeding. There are others the birth control pill, others. Uh, this baby has a tongue tie. This is a common cause of late onset decreased milk supply. Right? That's pretty obvious. And here's another baby who also has a tongue tie. I mean, I mean even, even a six-year-old can say that this is a tongue tie. You don't have to be a pediatrician. 
But in our health system, we have a problem. The, doc, the pediatrician takes care of the baby. The obstetrician takes care of the mother. And so the pediatrician who saw, who saw this baby and said, oh, there's no need to release the tongue tie because the baby's latching on and the baby is gaining weight well. Except, what about the mother? The mother was in extreme pain. But that doesn't matter to the pediatrician because he's only worried about the baby. That's ridiculous. So I'm going to show you a series of four videos uh, that look at a baby of three months of age. A mother with started off with, an, a large, with a large milk supply. This baby too had a tongue tie. Now the first video shows the baby drinking pretty well at the breast. You see, nice pauses. His lower chin, lip is sucked in, but nevertheless, he's drinking very well. Okay, no problem there. And this is probably why the baby is still gaining weight well. Then, a, few, a minute or two later, everything changes. It's the milk flow is still there. The baby's still getting milk. But the pauses are not so long anymore, right? And sometimes there are nibbles as well as pauses. So this baby, within a minute or two of starting off really well drinking, we're drinking well, is starting already to see, to show a decrease in the milk supply. Okay. The next video shows the baby drinking better because the mother is using breast compression. But even then, it's not as good as it was right at the beginning. So, if she doesn't compress, then the baby hardly drinks. This is better, by the way, breast compression than pumping. Who needs to pay money for a, for a pump? Breast compression, the milk goes straight into the baby. Okay. And then, oops, what did I do? Okay, and then the fourth video shows what happens after another three or four minutes altogether. And what happens? The baby is not happy at all at the breast, starts to pull at the breast, and you can see why a late onset decreased milk supply can result in mothers having sore nipples. One, which doesn't show here really, is that the baby tends to slip down on the nipple when the flow of milk slows down. But here's another reason why the mothers develop late onset sore nipples. So the baby's doing some sucking, the mother's compressing, so he's doing a little bit, but you can see, not very happy. He starts to pull at the breast, right? Starts to fidget. And then, oh, Okay, so all the women know why that hurt. <laughs> okay, so we see this as a very, very common problem. And we call it late onset decreased milk supply because these mothers often started off with a very, very abundant milk supply. But the, for some reason, it decreased. Too often, these babies are given medication for reflux. They are to the mothers are told to go off milk products so that the baby's not allergic to the mil uh, pro milk protein, but it's not okay. This is how, it's not the right diagnosis. Here is the, uh, how I do a tongue tie release. Um, it's all in slow motion because it only takes a second to do. So, I make a tiny snip on the frenulum and then I push so that it opens up into a rectangle, uh, sorry, a, 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 a diamond and then this is even slower motion just to show the lip. So, it, oops, so, okay, so just a tiny snip of the frenulum and then you can push it just like as if you were cutting uh, cloth. Okay. This uh, mother, uh, I don't know. Uh, so this baby, uh, the mother's had, I think the mother's had a breast reduction and we're supplementing with the baby, the baby with a lactation aid at the breast. 
Now, the tube has to be well placed, the baby has to be well latched on in order for this to work. But you can see it is working. The baby is getting milk and still breastfeeding. And I would disagree with the way uh, the WHO talks about it. Uh, I would say that even if we're supplementing with formula, the baby is still breastfeeding exclusively. Because breastfeeding is not just about the milk. Breastfeeding is a relationship. We heard uh, one of the previous speakers talk about that breastfeeding is a relationship, that a breastfeeding is something special, not just about milk. So that if the mother has to supplement, well, she can supplement like this. And, all, and then the baby is breastfeeding. And she can maintain that relationship. Okay, so let's uh, look at this video. It's got some subtitles. But basically what is going on in this video is the baby was born at 35 weeks gestation. The mother came to us when the baby was five weeks old, so he was at term. The mother was breastfeeding and giving the baby this uh, supplement by bottle. We don't like bottles. We prefer the uh, lactation aid at the breast. And this is what this uh, video is showing. It's also showing that the baby is asleep at the breast. Why? Because the flow of milk has decreased, the baby has fallen asleep. The mother is squeezing the devil out of her breast, but it's not working because the milk supply is down. So I insert the tube and then the milk comes up the tube, but it stops at the baby's mouth. So I fiddle with the tube a little bit the baby starts to drink and the baby wakes up and mothers are told in the neonatal intensive care unit they're told in cardiac units they're told even if uh, it's just a plain ordinary uh, postpartum area oh babies get tired at the breast they burn calories they just don't have the energy to breastfeed so what we see very frequently especially in special care units, the baby goes to the breast, the baby falls asleep at the breast, the baby comes off the breast, they weigh the baby and they say, oh, he only gained uh, 15 grams and he's supposed to gain 30 grams, so he didn't get enough milk, so they give him a bottle. And when the milk starts to flow from the bottle, the baby wakes up and sucks vigorously, just like here. So the baby's asleep. I insert the tube at the corner of his mouth. That makes him start to suck. The milk then just stops there because he stopped sucking. He stopped sucking because he wasn't getting milk. So I move the tube a little bit. He starts to get milk. He opens his eyes and sucks vigorously just as he would on a bottle which proves that the idea that these babies get tired at the breast is just not true. Babies do not transfer milk. Mothers transfer milk. Babies do not get tired at the breast. Okay, uh, for all the pediatricians, I don't know if you can do this here, but I can do it in Toronto because I can take care of any patient making the diagnosis of a breast abscess. You don't need an ultrasound. You don't need a uh, breast surgery. You just take out the pus. And sometimes that's enough. Yes, 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 I put in local anesthetic. Oui. Um, Prenatal expression of colostrum. We, reckon, we recommend this for mothers whose babies are at risk for developing uh, hypoglycemia or some sort of other problem. They express their milk before the baby is born so they have a collection of uh, milk so that they can feed that to the baby instead of formula. Okay. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Uh, vasospasm, we see a lot of this, uh, uh, especially in winter. This is a mother who just took the baby off the breast and you can see, I didn't catch it when it was still pink, but you can see that the whole, the whole half of the nipple here has turned white because blood is not getting to the end of the nipple. And the mother is complaining of burning pain. Then the blood starts to come back 
and the mother starts to say that now I have a throbbing type of pain. And uh, uh, this is usually associated with other causes of sore nipples, usually a poor latch, but this has now somehow sensitized the nipple. Okay. Now, I've already mentioned that, uh, that uh, nipple shields should be banned. So we had this baby who did not latch on in our clinic. Even though the mother had lots of milk, we could not get this baby to latch on. And so the baby sort of went crazy and uh, was hysterical. So we said, okay, calm the baby down. We tried all sorts of methods, it didn't work. So we said, okay, give him the bottle and we'll see, uh, we'll calm him down, we'll try again. And this is what she did. Can you see what's going on there? She's feeding the baby a bottle through a nipple shield. And the only way I can explain this, because I, never, I, I was so stunned by seeing this, that I forgot to ask her why she was doing this. <laughs> and, uh, but the only thing I can think of is that nipple shields are so pushed in our area that probably somebody told her that the best way to teach a baby to breastfeed is with a nipple shield. So feed the baby through a nipple shield. Why not? Okay, um, can we start babies on solids at four months? Yes, we can. We can because in this case, the mother was not breastfeeding exclusively. She was supplementing the baby with the lactation aid at the breast, but she was getting tired of using it. She felt she couldn't go out with it. And that's not true, of course she can go out with it, but okay. So we decided, let's show the mother that the baby can start to eat solids. And here the four-month-old gets a little bit of avocado or banana, I can't remember which, and she's thinking about this. <laughs> so we'll give her some more. Oh, that's good. I like that. That's good. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the mother, over the next few weeks, was able to get rid of the supplement, the formula, and the baby got solid plus breast, and that worked well for her. Um, okay, so this uh, next title is in Slovak and it means babies versus computers. And the mother and the father were very well versed about what can happen after, immediately after birth. That the baby will crawl up to the breast and latch on all by himself. Now this is an initially an hour long video. I won't, I won't uh, trouble you with watching the whole video, but it's been reduced to about a minute and a few seconds. And what you're going to see here is that the baby is crawling up to the breast and latching on by himself. You'll also notice that in much of Eastern Europe, people are hysterical about babies getting cold. So the baby initially has one blanket and then has two blankets and then has three blankets. And there is also a nurse running around saying, he needs a cap, he needs a cap, okay. otherwise he'll get cold. Okay, so here he is. You'll see towards the end of the video that the baby, there's a hand that comes over and that's a nurse that wants to take away the baby and the father says, why are you taking away the baby? He's almost latched on. And the nurse says, well, we have to weigh him and put the information into the computer. And that's why the title is Babies versus Computers. Okay, so there's the baby. You'll notice he hasn't been washed. He still has his vernix and he's finding his way towards the breast. There, he got his second blanket. <laughs> and you see how he's trying to latch on to something. He's not there, he's not at the breast, but the breast attack attracts him. I'm sure that some of you have seen this, but this is worth it. This is, this is like magical. This is nature the way it should be. And, you know, every, it's, it's, it's miraculous, but at the same time it's banal. And it's banal because every mammal in the wild has to do this. If they don't do it, they die. So there's the baby, almost latched on. And then you'll see the hand come up. And the father says, no you don't. <laughs> but she's disrupted the whole process. But he gets it anyway. There he is on the breast with his three blankets and a cap. <laughs> um, now, 
there has been this idea come out that babies of near term can't latch on or they can't breastfeed properly. This is rubbish. This is rubbish of the first degree. Here's a baby, 36 weeks gestation, birth weight 2640 grams, and he's crawled up to the breast all by himself, and I think that if you look carefully, you'll see that he's drinking just fine. Beautiful pauses, beautiful pauses. Okay, uh, this baby's doing just fine. He's going to breastfeed just fine, even though he was born at 36 weeks gestation. The idea I've heard is, oh, they don't have the proper cheek muscles to pull out the milk, except that babies don't pull out the milk. Okay, and here's a 34-week gestation baby, just one day old. And is he breastfeeding? Who says yes? Okay, who says no? Of course he's breastfeeding, he's doing beautifully. In most of North America, they say a baby can't go to the breast until they're 34 weeks, but he's only one day old. Mm, okay, I can't remember what this one is. Oh, here's a 29-weeker 20, uh, who's four days old and on the breast and breastfeeding. Mother's using uh, a compression to get him to drink more. This is a, um, I guess it's a lactation aid, but there's no milk in there, I don't think. And here is a, okay, any neonatologists here? Okay, now, I want to make sure you don't faint because what you're going to see is something you've probably never seen in your life. This baby is 27 weeks gestation. He was just born. Watch his chin. Is he drinking? Actually, the answer is yes, he is drinking. If you watch carefully, you'll see the pause. That's right. That's right. Any neonatologist faint over there? Okay, there are others here that I'll take. But I've been to Slovakia a few times, and uh, uh, you know they often ask me to see babies on the ward after I give a, uh, con a talk. And so uh, I walked into I walk into the rooms usually, and the mothers are not infrequently say uh, the baby has just fed. He's uh, not going to feed anymore, and the baby's all wrapped up. And I say, well, let's give it a try. And so here you'll see we're unwrapping the baby. You'll notice that one blanket has already been taken off. Then the duvet. Then another blanket. And then the uh, t-shirt. Okay. And he's still not awake. All right. But it doesn't take him long to realize, I'm still hungry. Babies cry because they're hungry. So he goes to the breast. And does he drink? Oh, he drinks like a star. Not the best of all latches, but he's drinking very, very well for a 24-hour-old baby. And this has a lot of implications because when mothers get painfully engorged on day three or four, it's not because it's normal. It's because the baby wasn't breastfeeding well or frequently enough in those first three days. And that means we've got to get the baby to the breast, we've got to make sure that baby's drinking, and we've got to make sure that he breastfeeds frequently. Okay, um, okay, this is also in Slovakia, and this mother just had her fourth baby. The baby is five, five days old. She has never breastfed because the babies didn't latch on. And so they told me, okay, smart guy, uh, you get this baby to latch on. Well, I got lucky. There's the baby on the breast and five hours old and drinking. That's my hand. Okay, I'm afraid to let go. The baby is drinking. It can be done even on these so-called inverted nipples. Okay, um, we use finger feeding to latch on a baby who has not latched on. Uh, we use it to prepare the baby to take the breast, not as an alternative way of feeding. There are better ways of feeding a baby who's not latching on. 
This baby was born at, uh, at uh, 32 weeks, never latched on, always only milk fed, breast milk fed. And so I do some finger feeding. He's two months old now. I do finger feeding to prepare him to take the breast. Finger feeding will calm an upset baby and it will wake up a sleepy baby. But you'll see, I don't, I don't do it for the whole feeding. I just do it for maybe 30 or 40 seconds. Once the baby is sucking well, I move him over to the breast. Now here's your exam question for extra points. Uh, the extra points are to say why did the baby not latch on to this right side but did latch on to the left side. And the hint is, you know, oh, you get extra points. But Okay, so he didn't latch on to this side. The hint for the others who didn't hear is that we filmed it. Cha, 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 cha. Okay, so we don't try 65 times to latch the baby on. He got three ch chances, it's over. Uh, we change sides. Now notice we would normally do this skin to skin, but the baby was so upset that we, uh, we decided that we won't undress him, we'll try him on the breast right away. So the first go, he doesn't take it, but the second go, he gets it. Can you see the pause? Okay, so some of that pause, by the way, this baby was exclusively breast milk fed. He was just be being fed by bottle. Okay, okay, and so the, the answer is yes. The baby had already fed on the right side, and that's why he didn't take the, second, uh, the, the, the breast the second time on the right, but he hadn't been fed on the left side, so the breast was fuller, as our uh, young genius over there figured out. Okay, so that's good. Um, I'm going to skip these and I'm going to uh, go on and oh, I don't have that much time I have just uh, two or three minutes okay so uh, here's a baby with hydrocephalus in North America there's a general opinion that if you are not perfect and if the baby's not perfect you can't breastfeed so this baby has hydrocephalus and he's breastfeeding just fine even though the mother was told that he would not breastfeed he didn't read the book Okay, uh, so just skipping along here. Here's a baby with a cleft palate, cleft lip, heart murmur, and Down syndrome. And he isn't really latched on, but because the mother's milk flow is going so rapidly, he actually drinks at the breast. And look at him, he's drinking well. The video turns, goes around, and shows the cleft lip, but of course you can't see the cleft, lap, uh, cleft palate, it's in his mouth. And when the milk flows, he's happy. When the milk doesn't flow, you saw he squirmed. Okay. And here's another baby with a cleft palate, but this one is actually latched on. This is a cleft of the soft palate. And he's being supplemented with a lactationate at the breast so that he gets milk. Or he breastfeeds better, let's put it that way. Okay. Um, and... Okay, here's a baby who never had problems with breastfeeding, but he shows that even older babies, he's a year, uh, do breast compressions. And if you're in La Leche League, you may know this. Okay. And finally, here is how we used to learn how to breastfeed. By watching mothers breastfeed. Notice how she does the rapid arm movement to get the baby onto the breast. Hold on a second, where does she do this? There you go, oh, there she goes, okay. There, all right. Okay, so I'm done. Uh, I, don't, I guess we don't have time for questions, but we can try to get questions later. Is that a hand? Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat>